Hello, I'm Dr. Amir Ghuli. I'm a consultant in reproductive medicine, surgery and assisted conception at the Homerton Fertility Center. Uh, today we again we talk about a surgical area in reproductive medicine. Again, one of the commonest surgical areas that we tackle and it's endometriomas. Again, let's look at how this treatment affects our future fertility. And we'll look at what is the treatment for endometrioma and I presented this earlier. Does removal of an endometrioma improve spontaneous pregnancy? And the answer is yes. Does it improve success of IVF? And there is a debate there because in small endometriomas this doesn't seem to make any difference. In larger endometriomas we just don't have the good amount of evidence in IVF. But in nature there seems to be better evidence. We also know that if you let an endometrioma grow and grow and grow, it will on its own damage the ovary. And that's something which we have seen in studies once again. Now, this is a study which looks at what happens to the AMH six months and 12 months after endometrioma surgery. A very important study to do because what it is telling us is it is trying to tell us how irrespective of how good surgeons we are does it have an impact on how we operate and how much tissue we remove. AMH concentrations were assessed before surgery and 6 and 12 months later 54 patients surgical stripping was done the plane of cleavage was identified and when bleeding happened, a bipolar was used. Let's look at the results. The baseline, if you look at the, from the baseline in the unilateral endometrioma, six months later, it was dropped down to almost half from, from 3.31 with the variable factor, it dropped down to 1.43. In 12 months, there is a minor increase that occurs. So with the unilateral endometriomas, you do your, if you decided to strip the ovaries, strip the cyst, and then use a bit of uh, buzzing, you are going to see a dramatic drop that will occur with the endometrioma. But you'll slowly see it increasing later on because tissue generation does tend to occur. On the other hand, when you do a bilateral endometrioma, there is a far more profound drop to AMH compared to a, a unilateral endometrioma. 12 months later, you're, you're not seeing the gradual increase to AMH that will occur when a single ovary is affected. And here again, what is important is, see the impact that doing a curative surgery has. Let there be no doubt that if you are doing the surgery for pain, then cystectomy along with stripping of the cyst wall will lower the chance of recurrence and in fact is a better treatment for pain. But if you decide that fertility comes into view and you are looking at someone who already has a low reserve or has a borderline reserve or has any reserve, you will come down here and see that that ovary is more likely to start losing its ovarian reserve. Again, where do you see it dif difficult and where do you see complications arise? The commonest place again is when you find stripping difficult. You can't find a plane of cleavage. You start stripping. You literally tear through the uh, tissue. And at, there are times when you just cannot get the cleavage right. You see that the ovary is stuck at the hilum and then you try and strip it or you try to burn it because there's bleeding. There's always an inflammatory response that follows. And also, as soon as you additionally use the bipolar, you start destroying more follicles. There's no doubt that stripping of the endometrioma leads to irreversible and sometimes I would say unwanted loss of ovarian reserve, more with bilateral endometrioma and less with unilateral. Now, what I would suggest is have a look at these two pictures and I often would come down and 
ask you this question and see the entire discussion that happens even though it's online has to start generating a very a question in your head and that's what the entire teaching is my teaching to a large extent is based on saying i want you to start thinking start questioning in fact my approach and your approach and we'll start looking at things much more clearer so if you have a look at the first picture the first picture indicates that if you see here this woman has a very good reserve she's got small endometrial mass in these cases leave the ovary aside do not touch it why because you're not going to gain anything and pregnancy rates are not affected and that evidence comes through IVF you see slightly bigger in the second picture you see slightly bigger uh, cysts in the ovary endometrial mass but you see a very good reserve now these are some of the patients where your stripping may still preserve a good amount of wear and tissue and th this is where you have the discussion now if you're a standalone surgeon then you have a discussion with your IVF specialist to say if you're doing IVF you know what do you want me to do that dialogue is very important because it questions each other's intentions and each other's plans and medicine has to do that because if you don't do that by questioning each other's intentions and plans you are not going to provide the best possible care to your patients you know singular practices singular uh, approaches and in fact have a higher error rate irrespective of experience uh, many of us with huge experience may not like it but that is the truth now the second thing which we uh, aim to th think about is like looks like the last endometrial mass large endometrial mass very little ovarian tissue left now this is a patient where I think you have to tell her the truth that try what we may the ovary left behind is going to be very small and the approach may be of draining and starting IVF treatment straight away but if you decide to strip the cyst wall you will cause significant damage and then the question now comes up is you know, do you you know years ago is to talk about the sandwich therapy of giving surgery gonapeptil uh, or prostap or xorodex and surgery again again what do, does long down regulation do it knocks out antral follicles so you are in a fix here you want to give the antagonist uh, the uh, agonist the long acting your ovarian reserve is already low and in fact you're making you're digging the hole much deeper uh, for this patient and I'm all, uh, equally I'm, I'm not here to give you a very clear answer I don't know sometimes the right answer and I have slightly moved towards draining and doing a bipolar to the cyst wall provided I can get on with fertility treatments sooner that's it for uh, this talk please share this talk if you do like it and uh, spread it across thank you very much